Who's ready to venture off the strip and go see what else is out here in the Las Vegas Valley? How about a shiny new resort in the southwest corner of town where the population just happens to be exploding? New casino, new food venues, amazing sports book. The adventure continues. We have two foodie stops. We are going to the famous Zippies, and then we're having our first ever gastro brunch, plus whatever else comes up. So get ready, because this adventure starts right now. Let's face it, my friends, most of you who watch Las Vegas Inside and Out watch us for this, the world-famous strip and its ever-changing allure. But we know that some of you want to peek beyond the resort corridor, see what life is like in this little valley, and whether you yourself might want to make a home here. This video, my friends, is a slice of life in Southwest Las Vegas. We are in Enterprise, Nevada, the fastest growing unincorporated area of the valley. Not only three huge master plan communities, but houses and more houses going up everywhere. It became official in 1996, but the history recalls it being dubbed Enterprise nearly a century ago. The boundaries for this 66 square mile dot on the map are generally the 215 Beltway to the north, Bermuda Road to the east, St. Rose Parkway to the south, and the mountains themselves over to the west. The latest data tells us almost a quarter million people live in Enterprise, including us. Our first stop today is the brand new Durango Casino and Resort, which just opened last month. The Durango sits on 50 acres at the Durango Drive exit of the 215 Beltway. It's the first station's property to be built in 15 years, and they built it here specifically to serve the fast-growing population in the Southwest Valley. This place took a while. Station casinos bought the land in 2000, but didn't really settle on an approved plan until 2021. $780 million later, there's a 15-story hotel tower and a classy casino resort with all the goodies you expect. By the way, the Durango is just across the highway from the only IKEA in Las Vegas. Useful information in case you really are relocating. Now, let's go explore the Durango. I told Dale I wanted to do this part of the voiceover because I simply have to fangirl a little bit over this check-in and reception area. We've been in our share of hotel lobbies in our time. In fact, you've been there with us for most of them. But I just think this is beautifully done. If you're checking in to one of those 209 rooms on 15 floors, take a moment to appreciate this quiet and serene corner. In fact, grab a coffee and pastry and have a sit down. At the end of the hall is the gorgeous, elegant Bel Air Lounge, managed by the Click Hospitality Group. Not only a beautiful space, but look at the drinks and small plates on the menu. Once the pool area opens this spring, called the Bel Air Backyard, the bar will be open to the outdoors. I see this fast becoming a favorite spot for locals. All right, the mic goes back to the gambler in the house and a walk through Durango's brightly lit casino. It's just over 83,000 square feet, significantly smaller in size than the ones at Red Rock or Green Valley Ranch, but a perfect fit for this place. There are 2,300 or so slots, some of them exclusive to just this property.
and 60 table games. The casino floor has two bars, the Oasis Bar near the Durango Drive entrance and the Casino Side Bar. And there's just something about this Baccarat setup that just keeps drawing us in. I think it's the neon. The Durango has a few restaurants on the casino floor, but the food hall is where we want to spend some time. It's called Eat Your Heart Out, a 25,000 square foot space that showcases 11 food establishments. A burger joint out of LA that got its start way back in 1946. a well-placed spot for a tropical libation. Sicilian pizzas straight out of New York, and you just gotta love that quote. Around the corner is a favorite local ice cream parlor. The Oyster Bar, busy even at 9.30 a.m. And a new pasta eatery from Mark Vetri. There's Hawaiian street food. And next to that, a noodle house. I'll tell you what, my friends, those instruments on the wall really caught my eye. Nice vintage stuff. The Sushi Bar is another venue local to Las Vegas. As is Vesta Coffee Roasters. And one more LA import, sandwiches made by your Uncle Polly. One more stop at the Durango is the sports book. It's Sunday morning just before 10 a.m. when we're visiting and NFL kickoffs are due any minute. Mobile betting is in full swing, but the action is in here, the STN sports area. It's 10,000 square feet of screens and seating and bars. Nirvana for the sports fan on any game day. Perhaps the most interesting and unique thing in the whole place is this. The sports book spills outdoors to a patio that has wraparound TV screens, fun picnic seating, and a bar. And bar taps that are sports trophies. <laughs> what a cool touch. It's all part of the George or the Sportsman's Lounge if you prefer. This too you can access directly from the parking lot and lots of folks have done just that this morning. The George also has an entrance in the casino. A long bar top and seating that overlooks the sports book itself. Moving on a few exits east of Durango is what's probably the area's biggest shopping and dining district called Arroyo Market Square. This 950,000 square foot mixed use development features 72 stores and restaurants. A wide variety that includes big names like Walmart, Home Depot, and Best Buy. And for you electric vehicle folks, there is a huge Tesla charging station under construction here at Arroyo Crossing, just next to Party City. Now the reason we stopped here today is to pay our visit and have some lunch at the Hawaiian sensation that opened in October, Zippy's. It's at Badura Avenue, just behind Marshall's and the Home Depot. If you're not Hawaiian, let me explain. 
Zippy's is a legendary casual dining restaurant out of Honolulu, and this is its very first location on the mainland. The company started planning this back in 2019, but as we all know, there were events in the meantime that slowed things down. But it's here at last. The parking lot is full, so let's go in and see how long the wait is. The interior is arranged with a diner-style dining room to the right. Looks like a casual counter in the middle. And an incredibly busy kitchen. The menu features beloved items made famous at Zippy's total of 23 locations across the Hawaiian Islands. This huge photo is an homage to the first Zippy's location circa 1966. Up front is the bakery with a selection of pastries and donuts, cakes and pies. And next to that, the incredibly busy takeout window. Can you even believe this crowd? Our host told us the wait for a table would be 40 to 50 minutes, and he said it's like this every single day. Well, my friends, I have a couple of rules about going out. If I have to wait more than 10 or 15 minutes, I don't stay at a place. All right, future Dale here. We were really disappointed that we weren't able to sample the food at Zippy's. We have heard such great things about it, but we just couldn't wait that day because we had a prior commitment. But we will definitely be back again, that is for sure. That place was 40 to 50 minute wait. So guess what? We got plan B. We're gonna go in here and check this place out. We've never been in here. This used to be a pizza place. And right over here is our favorite chilies in all the world. And this is where we have a very good friend who works in here at Chili's. So let's go check this place out. What do you think? Let's go. So we're back at a Royal Market Square now in a spot we haven't tried yet called Toasted Gastro Brunch. <laughs> Gotta admit the name is intriguing. The yellow awnings are extra cheerful. And there are inviting patios on two sides. Nice curb appeal. Hey friends, thanks for hanging out with us today on our little whirlwind tour of Southwest Las Vegas. I'm absolutely glad to be sitting down having a passion fruit iced tea. We both ordered a breakfast special, even though it's almost 3 p.m. That's okay, we gotta roll with it, right? Thanks for being with us. Toasted is a concept from successful restaurateur Sammy Ledecky, whose Sammy's Wood Fire Pizza is well known in California and Las Vegas. This toasted location, one of three, serves breakfast and lunch till 3 p.m. with a down-home farm theme that's really appealing. This is amazing. This is called a Denverish Scramble. I can, can, can never eat all this kind of food. I got this truffle potatoes. I got a beautiful uh, uh, scrambled egg thing here. Let me give this a shot. Oh, oh. That is really good. That's a flavor I've never had before. Really good. All right, let's check in and see what Paula got. What the heck? This is a Monte Cristo sandwich. I haven't had one in years. Typically, they are fried on like, I don't know. Anyway, this is grilled. It is buried in powdered sugar. It's turkey, it's Swiss cheese, it's jam. Oh my goodness, like Dale said. How the heck am I gonna even dig into this a quarter of it? I don't know, let's try. And of course, powdered sugar all over my face. That's a guarantee. Oh, look at that jam. <laughs> all right, I need the filling. Here we go. Smoked turkey, Swiss, strawberry jam, amazing flavors. All right, maybe I'll eat a quarter of it. 
So did you notice that we did not show you the bill as we always do when we go out to eat? Yeah, I'll tell you what, it was kind of odd because we're sitting there and waiting and waiting. And finally, our waiter came over and we said, hey, can we have the bill? He says, no, you don't get a bill. And pa Paula goes, what? I was really confused. <laughs> yeah, somebody in there must have recognized us or something because we didn't have to pay for any of it. And I'll tell you what, it was good. He wished us a happy new year, gave us a big smile, and we were just delighted because we love the place. If you're in that area of town, you got some Tesla chargers if you're uh, into electric cars. You got a beautiful Chili's next door, which our good friend works at. And we also have a beautiful ice cream store that just opened up. And I'll tell you what, it's busy even in the middle of winter. Handles doesn't even yeah. matter how cold it is. There's always a line. So anyway, a Royal Market Square. Big thumbs up over there. Now, here's one more exciting thing happening in Enterprise. At long last, construction on the high-speed train between Las Vegas and California is due to start in early 2024. The land is on Las Vegas Boulevard South, just across from the outlet mall at Warm Springs. Brightline West is going to connect us with SoCal via a high-speed passenger rail system, all new construction. It'll run 218 miles, be all electric, and will travel at speeds up to 200 miles per hour. <laughs> all I can say is bring it on. And we're going to end our little tour of Enterprise Nevada at the same place where we started. This is Olympia Sports Park in one of those master plant communities we spoke of earlier in Southern Highlands. This vantage point looking north is pretty spectacular, what do you think? The park sprawls across 17 acres and truly has something for everyone. One thing we can always say about living in Las Vegas, we really have some amazing public parks. There's Dale, making music no matter what, even in the local park. <laughs> I'll tell you, I had such a good time in that park. We actually love it up there. Uh, there's a little mountain. Well, it's a huge mountain, but you can walk all there's the way up. There's walking trails. Yeah, you yeah. walking trails where you can go all the way top, and you get an amazing view of the Las Vegas Strip from up there. We couldn't wait to show you that view because yeah. it's very unique and probably a viewpoint that you've never seen before. Yeah, and the, the other reason why we did that shot, if you'll notice where I put the Las Vegas uh, Strip, in there that's how small the strip is compared to the rest of the valley yeah actually great perspective shot with the mountains on all sides yeah. so anyway we hope you enjoyed that little tour of southwest las vegas so what about the durango can i just tell you my friends they oh, yeah. tore down the fiesta the texas and they sold the palms to put up the durango I'm not real happy about it, but it's a nice property, and I'll give them their due because they named it after my cousin. Well, well said. <laughs> you sort of have me speechless there. There you go. I knew he was going to moan and groan about them selling the Texas and Fiesta to finance the thing, but they had to find $780 million somewhere. <laughs> and you know what? I probably gave them that much just in gambling. You probably did. I probably did. <laughs> but it's a beautiful property. Yeah, we actually really, really like the place, and I could see us spending time there for sure. So uh, the Southwest Valley, uh, uh, specifically where we were, of course, which is where do we live? We live in Enterprise, right. Nevada. How cool is that? We loved finding all the facts and figures for you on this little corner of the valley, and we hope you found it all interesting. I hope you enjoyed that little trip because we, we enjoyed it ourselves. Good. All right, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification button. Anything else you want to tell these nice people, Miss Paul? Lots more coming up for you in January. Stick with us. We've got good stuff coming in 2024. Happy New Year, everybody. Hope you had a good time. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you.